What's up boys, it is 782 here with episode 10 of Fixing the Franchise here with the Anaheim Ducks as we move into the 2022 NHL Entry Draft as Stanley Cup Champions. In the last episode we had a roller coaster of a ride as we won our first Stanley Cup of the Franchise mode as we were led by Rick and Raquel, Ryan Getzlaff, Sam Steele, John Gibson, all the boys to our first Stanley Cup with myself at the reins. It was a big ep, and at the end I had some questions moving into the off season, so quickly going over the comments that you guys left for me. Max Kids Brody tells me that if I need to give up too much to get the first overall pick, I should go for right. He normally goes second, so him at four is a steal. So I could get Shane Wright at number four, perhaps, he's telling me, if I can't get him at number one because McKinnis has uh, just too much trade value with the set with the Red Wings. Mass Movia Joni tells me go get the number one pick. You obviously can with all the assets you have. Maybe include Silverberg, lower the cap hit so you can sign the youngsters and big money for the medium elite players. Makes sense. Definitely going to do that. Also told me another comment. He says try to get a high rated defender if you can for the future. Maybe a medium elite goalie. So there's just all kinds. You just got to play with the system as always. Shout out to Trevor Mommeyer for telling me how much you liked the video. I appreciate that, my friend. Chris Chong says trade Setzinger if you need to trade a winger since he's a grinder. Very true. I hadn't considered that, that Setzinger is a grinder. And Michael Brunvaselli telling me I should check out the goalie from Edmonton, Stuart Skinner. I could trade Max Jones for him and draft pick. So I could do that as well. Moving into this draft, I do want to try and get the number one overall pick, the Croatian, Brennan McInnes. That would be very nice if I could. Uh, Ali Adams and Brad Labyrinth, not sure about them. Number two and three. If not, I because I, I don't know if I want to trade all that value just to get a pick number three, when I could just trade for four and get Shane Wright, which would cost less, and he's a monster as well. Uh, Matthew Savoie is also someone that I could get. But for right now, moving in the draft, I want to get number one, and if I can't, I'm going to try for number four. It all depends on if the pick is, if the team wants to trade their pick. So let's begin the draft. I got to be efficient with my time because the, the clock is there. Let's see. Do anyone want to trade their pick? No. The Capitals do want to trade their pick. Okay. So the Capitals are the only team in the top five that wants to trade their pick. I got to see with Detroit. What is it going to take for the first overall pick? Uh, Maximilian Setzinger, he's a monster, he's a medium lead grinder, but I'd rather keep uh, Lindstrom than him with all the goal scoring that he did. Uh, he's a very good defensive forward as well as a grinder, five-star physical. So he's a great player, don't get me wrong. But if I could move Setzinger, and I don't know who else I could throw in on that deal, maybe Benoit Olivier Gru. Uh, let's see where I'm at with that. Trade value looks to be in my favor. Uh, trade rejected, it, the value is not where it needs to be. Okay. So Setzinger grew. I could throw in Jakob Silverberg, perhaps. What would they say if Silverberg's in the deal? We could live with what you're sending us, but not in this deal. It's woefully insufficient. Okay. Now, if a f mm, second round pick, what, what happens if a second round pick gets thrown in? Still not good enough. I don't want to trade my first with those three pieces. Uh, sheesh. I don't even want to trade my second, to be honest. Where am I with the second and a fourth? Oh, man, not even close. The trade value way in my favor, but it's not even close, they say. I have other prospects, maybe Vili Hanola. Where they want Vili Hanola, not too many skaters now. Take out Silverberg, keep Hanola. Throw in a second and a fourth. What if that is the deal? It's too far off. Value's too far off, okay. What happens if I put a third? This is crazy. Okay, this is my final offer. What do they say? Too far. Okay. Sorry, boys. Can't get it done. Just not... There's just, just too much value. Let's see what McInnes' overall is. First overall pick, the Detroit Red Wings select. Brennan McInnes, 84 overall. Wow. Right wing, 84 overall, medium franchise sniper. Wow. That's why they don't want to give him up. A pure monster. Look at that. Five-star shooting. Sheesh. Obviously full trade value right there. Sheesh, can I just trade? What if I trade for him? Second round pick next season. What do you say, boys? Still too far off. Okay, so it's not going to happen. He's a monster. He's the future of Detroit. Now I have to see if I can get the fourth overall pick from the Capitals because it doesn't look like the second or the third will happen either. But I'm okay with that since Shane Wright should fall. Um, so it looks like I can trade Setzinger straight up. 
Uh, that would definitely actually the trade value is very much in my favor. So I could get more than this. Could I get two first round picks? Maybe even more to be honest. Two firsts, a second and a third for Maximilian Setzinger? I could, but they just don't want to do it because of the salary. And the clock run out there, so Ali Adams, medium elite offensive defenseman, 80 overall, goes to the Minnesota Wild, 5'9", second coming of Victor Mete, perhaps. So let's try Setzinger next year's second for two firsts, a fourth and a fifth. Trade accepted. If I didn't accept this offer of yours, the Capitals fans would call for my resignation. Okay, whatever you say, Bello. So I trade Setzinger in a second for two first round picks and a fourth and a fifth. So all I need to hope now, also quick side note, I did try to make the trade uh, briefly. I tried to offer them, yeah, Jakob Silverberg and uh, Benoit Viegru and all that. And it was just too much money. They didn't want to re-sign those players. because They needed to save money. So hopefully Shane Wright does not go and he doesn't. Oh, but I wouldn't have minded taking this guy either. Brad Lambert, 81 overall, 18 years old, medium elite centerman, playmaker. Sheesh, those are some nice stats. But boys, we have the fourth overall pick, and we are going to select from the OHL. I could take Cristiano Ling, who is a medium elite 17 year old defenseman. Uh, that's really tempting as well, Cristiano Ling. But I really like Shane Wright. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll the dice right here because this guy's supposed to be a monster. From the OHL Kingston Frontenacs, the Anaheim Ducks are proud to select Shane Wright. He is 81 overall out of the draft. You just love to see it. 81 overall, medium elite. Beautiful. Let's see what Cristiano Ling was. He was 78 overall, medium elite offensive defenseman. Respect. It's okay. 17 years old as well. So having done that, our next pick now comes at number 31. Uh, it looks like some medium top nines, no one too crazy here, medium top six, top six, top six, top six, we move closer, let's, let's start from the back actually, or from the beginning, Lang Oland was medium elite as well, Savoie medium elite, yes, Gaucher was medium top six, 75 overall, then the overall begins to drop, medium elite McCarthy, medium top six, high top six D, okay, so now we make our pick at number 31 here, Looks like it's gonna be Pedro Pacioretty. He's a medium top six, it says he's a gem. He's ranked 30th by our scouts, this is a no-brainer. Has to be him. Pedro Pacioretty from Liga. 15 points in 53 games, a, ah, another centerman in the system, I know, but we have to. Pedro Pacioretty, welcome to Anaheim. He is 75 overall, medium top six. Sheesh, I love it. Very, very nice. Good start to the draft thus far. Now we sim to pick number 62, the end of round number two. At 62 overall, Ashton Davies looks like he's the highest potential, but I hate that I'm taking so many um, centermen. This goalie could be medium elite, so I might trade down to pick like 72 from 62. I think I'm gonna do that. So I'll give you a second now, and you give me a third now, and a fourth next season. Great, and it's LA's fourth, so it should be good. They're not a very good team. So with that pick, the New York Rangers selected uh, Conacher, who is medium top 957 overall. Nice, okay, so it wasn't, didn't miss anything there. Uh, the Canadians got another McCarran. No one too crazy, it seems like. So let's sim to pick number 72. Hopefully the goalie's still there. Didn't want to go too early. Yeah, okay. I think he should be there. So at 72nd overall, yes, we will select from the U.S. development system, goaltender Trenton McPherson, possibly medium elite. He's, our, goal, our scouts have him at 75. Put up some decent numbers. Not good wins, but good numbers. So hopefully he's medium elite. And he is 47 overall, but medium elite. And that's all that matters. So simming now to pick 93 at the end of round three. Another goalie who could be medium elite, Matthias Kaspar. Then there's Manny Dexter. Manny, but he, our scouts have him at 104. I wouldn't mind another goalie in the system because that makes that would make somebody expendable. And he could be medium elite. So shoosh, you know what, I'll go for him. Matthias Kaspar. And he's a fringe starter, yikes. So let me see, if I sim this first pick, Sabarin, 
And I send the second pick, it's Manny Dexter. Okay, there's low top nine. Okay, it's not that bad. Not bad at all, actually. Pick 106. Uh, probably going to be this guy right here. He's low top nine. Dominic Threlfall. Or I could go Keith Nielsen, who our scouts have at 109. He's a six foot four offensive defenseman, perhaps? Uh, yeah, why not? I'll go for him. Keith Nielsen, the Swiss man. He is low elite, 48 overall. Okay, I'll take it. Project, but has the potential. Threlfall was low top nine. So now round four pick 17 at 110th overall. Aiden de la Gorgonzière is over here, 20 years old, no thanks. Now's the time where you can reach a little bit, so I think I will go ahead and do that, because this guy is Yuri Volkov, he might be low elite, I think it's worth the pick. 6'2", defenseman, 20 years old, so maybe he has the overall. He's 61 overall, low 7th D. Sheesh. These guys are, it's not the best draft. I think the scouts told me that though, eh? Not the best draft. Should I try if that guy was maybe medium starter? This guy's low bottom six almost guaranteed, Sergei Frolov. Ah, oh, man, it's a, it's a tough call. I'm going to go for the forward, just because we've drafted a lot of other people. You know what? I, you got to go for the potential. Jermaine Rolston, 17 years old. Welcome. Medium starter, bang. So you got to just 48 overall, though. But you got to pay, man. You got to just, you got to pay to play. You got to get the, you, you draft the goalies, and if you, you, you got to trade them, you trade them. Kai Uchaktz is going to be my next pick. Six foot three from the WHL. He is medium AHL top six. Okay. Uh, last pick of round five. Uh, UC Alternan might be top four D. Says he might be an enforcer as well. I see there's a lot of grinders and enforcers in the future over here. Medium seventh D defensive defenseman. 18 years old. Pick 163 here in round six. Uh, not much to look at, but this guy, Pat Recchi, could be medium top six forward, so let's try him out. He is medium bottom six, maybe related to Mark Recchi. 167th overall now. A lot of these guys just dropped the free agency. This guy, Lindbergh, Ola Lindbergh. Okay, maybe he's a starter. I know it's like my fourth goalie here, medium fringe starter. Uh, I know I'm taking a lot of goalies, but I'm just trying to strike gold. Uh, this guy's low 7th D, almost guaranteed. Oh, this guy might be low elite, though. Colin Delzato. So I'll go ahead and take him. And he was low top 6, 49 overall. Not too bad. Round 7, pick 10, 196th overall. Uh, this guy's maybe medium top 9. Mohamed Malhotra, son of Manny Malhotra, maybe. Let's go for it. He's medium bottom 6, 54 overall. Shoo! And the last pick of the draft, whose day are we going to make at 217th overall? Sort by just, oh, that's one of these guys for sure. Corey Petrie or Alexander Volchenkov. Grinder, not really down for a grinder. Let's go for the guy, he's rated higher and we have, you know, I can use a defenseman. Corey Petrie, he is, it won't even tell me, medium 7th D, 48 overall. So a lot of draft picks in this draft. Pedro Pacioretty, Shane Wright, we had a lot of guys. A lot of them won't make the league. A lot of them will end up getting traded. But that is where we are. So our goalie coach and AHL assistant coach need new uh, contracts. Gilbert Hull, man, what a season for him. He now has, uh, can, you, can you see? Two Stanley Cups for him. Good record. He's loving the team. So happy to see that. 59% team fit for some reason. Ah, Tange, Tange, Tange. He wants to be the head coach. Well, sorry, Bello, you're the goalie coach. I'll give you three years, and I'll give you a bunch of money, just because, sadly, I need to break this garbage system, since it is a broken one. And then the guy assistant coach here, Lubomir Bebko, he's uh, an assistant coach. Sorry, Bello, assistant coach. Couple of years. I'll give you a lot of money, though, to make it worth your while. Then all these scouts expired as well, so I gotta re-sign them too. That's all done, so now we go to contracts and we see what is going to happen here. We have 46 out of 50 contracts and $35 million of cap space. Okay, all expiring. I don't know why we're at 46 contracts. So Hampus Lindholm, he does not want an extension, which is a bit disconcerting. 5.4 million for four years, definitely a fair contract. I wouldn't mind, I would be okay giving him 5.5 for four years if he wants to sign that. Raquel does want the extension. 
Raquel wants 7.25 and it doesn't get lower than that unless you offer him one year uh, he wants a lot more if you ask if you want more than that um, sheesh can I give him four years at seven million that's still a lot of money 6.950 for four years hopefully he accepts that Ryan Getzlaff I don't think I have the money to sign him or the space. Uh, Joel Edmondson, I definitely want to sign. Huge presence for the Stanley Cup run. Uh, he does want the extension, so I'd be happy if I could get him for uh, three years at 2.225. Uh, Armia, I'll probably just let walk. Lundstrom, I'm just going to qualify, I think, because I'm not, oh, I, but I'm not sure what's going on with the contract spots over here. I need to figure that out. Sherwood, I, liked, I would like to resign. He wants a one way deal. Uh, I could give him that. Stolars, I'm going to have to let walk because now I'm going to sign McKinley, who now becomes our, will now become our backup in San Diego. And our backup backup third goalie will be Bednar, who has that starter potential, as he will be the third goalie in San Diego. So before I do anything, I need to see what those guys say to those contracts. Advance today, see what all the coaches and the scouts and everybody has to say. Tonga doesn't want to be, doesn't is not comfortable working. They're not comfortable, they're not interested in the job that they've already worked. So, okay, I'm going to let those guys walk and I will get better coaches when it is time to, on July 1st. So Sherwood, Raquel, both say yes. Uh, Lindholm wants to test the free agent market, but more money could change his mind. Edmondson, yes. Bednar and McKinley both say yes. So where does that put me now? That puts me at 47 contracts and $27 million of cap space. Hampus Lindholm, I definitely need to re-sign Lindholm. If I could give him five years, he's worth it. He's an 86 overall defenseman. He's a top D. Maybe five years at 775, 5.775. Um, Armia could be good, especially on a two-way deal. So you know what? He's 80 overall. I'll sign him to that, to that contract. Lundstrom here, Lundstrom, he might be uh, bumped out of a spot by uh, Byfield and Wright and all these guys, so you know what, I'm going to qualify Lundstrom, I'm not sure if he's coming back to be honest. Uh, Bergman, I would like to bring him back in San Diego. Uh, Mirko Mueller, I'll probably just let walk. Jakob Persson, I will resign. I would like to give him two years, he deserves it. Uh, Reed Boucher... Probably let him walk. Uh, same with uh, Taylor Lyre. Nick Delorier, I'd like to re-sign. You know, but I got him his cup. I'm not sure about Nick Delorier. I, I want to. I want to, but I don't know if I can. Cider off. Uh, you know, I'll give you yeah, just one year. Drew, I'll give him a couple years. Reed Duke has been very good on San Diego. I'll give him another one-year deal. Carter Rowney is going downhill. He had eight goals, 19. I'm gonna to have to let him go. Carter Rowney did very well in our first season that we had him, though, so I'm glad for that for all that he did. Nick Sorensen doesn't fit either anymore, unfortunately. These are the prospects I was talking about last time. So low top, low bottom six, I'm gonna let walk. Medium seventh D, I'm gonna let walk. I think. Uh, sheesh, I gotta look at who I have and who what I need. But before that, I just want to advance the next day and see what uh, Lindholm says. Come on, Hampus. He rejects it. Armia says yes. Duke says yes. Sideroff wants to go to free agency. Uh, the person wants more money. So unsigned, I will sign Shane Wright because now I know that he's going to play in the NHL. So I'm not going to leave him in junior. Uh, Pedro Pacioretty, he would not. He's not in junior. So if I sign him, he'll play in San Diego. So bang, there you go, Pedro. Brant Clark, if I sign him, he's probably going to stay in juniors or something. I don't know, I have to wait and see on him. But for at least for Wright and Pacioretty, I'm going to sign them right away. I could probably trade uh, Lindbergh as he could be a chip for trades. Back to all expiring here, Hampus Lindholm. He still doesn't want that deal. I'm going to offer him four years, six mil. See if he likes that a bit more. Getzlaff, I still don't think I can. Bergman also wanted more money, I think. I'll give him the max, uh, I'll give him 900k on a two-way deal. First, I'll give him the max. I'll give him 900k for two years as well on a two-way deal. Sider offer of 9.925. 
Brandon Hagel, low top six. I remember getting him in that deal. I'm going to just let him go. I'm just going to make decisions here. Benoit, let him go. He's 23, low seventh D. Pierce, I'm going to sign. If he doesn't play, he doesn't play. Vero, I'm going to sign. He has the high top six D potential. Zach Terry, what did he do in, his, in the minors in OHL? 42 points in 66 games. Okay, you know what? Get in here, bro. Then Filatov, Nikolai Filatov, medium top nine. Ah, get in here, bro. Get in here. I'm a sucker for these guys who could be who could grow a little bit and get more trade value. Uh, Lindholm still rejects, and so does Sideroff. Okay, and so does Bergman. Okay, and then everybody else joins the team. Great. So okay, goodbye, little pigs. You don't want to resign? No problem. Bergman, goodbye. Uh, and Sideroff, goodbye. You know what? Qualify. I'm gonna trade you for a seventh round pick because you're a little piggy. Hampus Lindholm still doesn't want to re-sign at 6 mil. Can't offer him much, much more than that, to be honest. I'll try 6.150, but I can't really do the sky's the limit or anything like that. Reed Boucher, I'm going to let go all these guys over here. Boucher, Lear, Nick Delorier, I just can't let go to him. You have a, you just hold a curse over me, man. So without Ryan Getzlaff, let's say Sam Steele first line, Adam Henrique second line, Shane Wright third line, maybe Quinton Byfield as well, Moran. There's just no room for Ryan Getzlaff. As much as it breaks my heart, I just, I can't. I'd rather we go out on a high note with Ryan Getzlaff. So Bello, I'm going to have to release you. It breaks my heart, but thank you for all you've done in Anaheim. I just can't afford to do it. Deloria resigns and Lindholm still rejects. Four years at 6.350 will be what I offer Hampus Lindholm now. Uh, it's a bit of a buzz. I might just let him walk to free agency. And it is an easy decision. No, oh, thanks, Hampus. I'm glad it was an easy decision to renew your contract. So I believe everyone is signed up and good to go. So we'll advance into free agency here. Didn't hire those coaches because they were little piggies. Now let's check out hire coaches and scouts and all that because... Oh man, I just couldn't get anybody. So we need a goalie coach in the NHL, NHL goalie coach. So I'm going to go to, I guess, just associate coach or whatever, make him in charge of the goalies. Any assistant coaches in charge of goalies? No. Okay. You're going to be an associate coach. Who's the best associate coach? These guys all worth the most. Who's best at yeah teaching and everything? A plus, A power play, A minus defense. Great. Reed Street. Bello, I want you to be my NHL goalie coach. I'm going to give you four years, and I'm going to pay you things. I'm going to give you numbers you never even thought were real. $2 million. How does that sound? $2 million. Oh, no, the max is $1.92 million. So, bang, offer contract. Thanks. Get back to you in a few days. AHL associate coach. No, assistant coach. They're all D-rated, okay? Don't want any of those guys. Someone who's good with teaching would probably be best in the uh, AHL. Is there a team fit that you can look at as well? Yeah, team fit, 29%. Oh, but ah, there's only two players on the team. That's the problem. Ah, don't even bother looking at team fit then. Just look at the teaching rank. Uh, the B teaching is nice. This guy's a C-minus coach. Yeah, camper. Bear camper. I need him as an assistant coach. 825K. There you go, Bello. How was, uh, what was the team fit of the guy that I sent an offer to over here? Street, team fit of uh, 44%. Sheesh, not that great, now that I think about it. Yeah, one of the worst available, actually. But he'd be for the goalies, it doesn't even matter, it's for the goalies. Ugh, it doesn't make sense, this, all this system. So now let's check out the contracts and see what we need heading into free agency. Uh, forwards. So, forwards on this team, we have one, two, okay, no, actually, I need to look at it by this way. One, two, three, Moran could play in the NHL, he has to, I think, almost, So and so is Byfield. One, two, three, four, five, uh, in the system, is there anybody else? Lundstrom, so I have to trade him. So, let's say five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 12, let's say Sherwood. So that's a bit scary. If I could trade Silverberg and Milano and then, because they're going to grow, I might be able to trade Silverberg and Milano and bring in some better people. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is the defense here. Wait, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, yeah. I wouldn't mind moving an 81 like Josh Mahura, 
who's costing a bit much, and then, uh, yeah, and then gets someone like more like an 83 in defense. So look for a mid-range defender. I have a lot of cap space. Look for a mid-range defender slash maybe even a first-line right winger if we want to make a splash. First-line right winger could be a move. Even a first-line center wouldn't be bad. Let's just see who's in free agency before we start thinking about all that. So in free agency, who is available? Right off the bat, we want to go to UFA. Bang. Rasmus Ristolainen, and Philip Forsberg, Nazem Kadri. Let's sort by overall. Latang, Kadri, Ekholm, LeBanc, Cahoon. Dominic Cahoon's available. Uh, playmaker. Okay. All right, no, I'm thinking of uh, Kubalik. That's why. Uh, Joe Pavelski, Shattenkirk, all those good guys. Any cool goalies? Uh, Marc Andre Fleury, okay. Who are the RFAs that were available? Zach Arensky and Dennis Gurianov, Kempe, Kapanen, Hosang, Sammy Blay. Interesting RFAs, yeah. Isaac Lundstrom. So I need to figure out who's going to be on this team and who do I. Uh, who do I make a move for? No big right wingers, unfortunately. I'd have to make a trade if I want a big right winger on the first line. Left wings, I'm not going to touch. Centerman, Nassim Kadri isn't really a first line center. He wants eight million. Gets laughs down here as well, but not really going to work. I don't think I'm going to get a forward by free agency. Defense, however, a lot of good op options on defense. Josh Manson is now a free agent. Man, I wish you could see how the coach. Can you see how the coach likes this player? You can't, eh? You would just say, you can just see fits in the following lines based on Gilbert's scheme, Ull's scheme, all defensive pairings. But it's only a two dot there. Uh, yeah, like Will Butcher would fit on my third pair and all penalty kills. Uh, this guy would fit in my top four. This guy, Chris Letang, I'm saying. Defensive pairing three. See, Rasmus Ristolainen wouldn't really fit. Uh, but Chris Letang would be interesting. He's 35 years old, though. That's the unfortunate part. He still puts up the numbers. Uh, not quite as he used to. Uh, probably wouldn't want to touch Chris Letang. Will Butcher would be interesting. Former Montreal Canadian franchise mode. But someone who could play on the second pair. Ekholm wants less money. He's a good two-way D. Four stars. Shattenkirk's a bit old. Josh Manson wouldn't be bad. But three teams interested in him... Braden McNabb, now we're moving to the 82 categories here. Darnell Nurse, I saw him at an 84, I think, during the playoffs. He'd fit on our top four defensive pairings, it says. Wouldn't be bad, he does want a bit much for an 82 overall, though. Oli Mata wants a six-year deal. Zadarov would fit well on all defensive pairings, that's nice to see. This is Nikita Zadarov, he's a defensive defenseman. Would I want an 82 overall in my top six on my, on my second pair? I'm pretty much between Ekholm and Zadarov, but I have the money, so it wouldn't be bad to go after Ekholm. It wouldn't be bad to go after Ekholm, but I'm not sure if he fits that well with the scheme. That's the problem. Do I want to trade an 81 for an 82? It doesn't make much of a difference. If I get Matthias Ekholm... Sign him to a three-year deal. I can give him five years, 5.850, just for three years. Maybe I go for that. I think I need that 85. <sighs> okay, let's try it. At home, five years, uh, three years, 5.8. Anyone with potential I could go after? A low top four deed? Nah, 57 overall. No one in forwards either. Cahoon is 85. LeBanc. LeBanc could play right wing. I like Cahoon's numbers much more. 85 overall. Only wants... Ah, only. It's a 6 mil is 6 mil. I'm going to see what I can do in uh, in trades over here as I look to see uh, what's going to happen with this team. Looking at Stuart Skinner like Big Mikey asked me to do. 74 overall, 23 years old, medium starter, not a lot of value. I don't think I'm going to go after him, to be honest. I think I have better guys in the pipeline, and I don't really need him. I'd rather have Dostal playing as my minor league starter. But as of right now, I'm looking to get a big package, maybe where I could trade Silverberg, Jones, Milano, and Gru. Uh, just, I don't think that there's much room for these guys. And if I could get a nice right winger for them, that would be worth it. 
So after running through a bunch of teams, I believe I have three options. My number one option though is Jonathan Marcheseau. He is 31 years old, 87 overall, two years left at a very good number. Coach seems to like him on the first line, all power play, all penalty kill. And last season he put up 84 points in 80 games and he's done it uh, two years in a row, 80 plus. So I'd like to see if I can get Marcheseau for all this, including Isaac Lundstrom, who I'm not going to re-sign as an RFA. Just gonna put a pick back to balance it. I don't really like trading with rivals here, but I'm gonna see what they say with a fourth. I don't think they even wanna do it like that. No, so Marshall so will not happen. Another option might be Nick Ehlers, but I don't think he puts up the numbers that I'd really want. 17 and 45, he's a playmaker. He's, he'd be good on the first line, all power play, all penalty kill, okay. Could be Nick Ehlers, but another guy I'm thinking of, a, a little bit of a cheaper option, would be Victor Olafsson. Victor Olafsson had 26 goals and 30 assists this season, and coach says he fits on the first line, power play, and all penalty kill, full four bars. So the coach really likes Victor Olafsson. He's a sniper. Could be good on that first line. I don't know, but he would be a cheaper option. Wouldn't cost us all this. Another option I'm looking at is Alexander Nylander, 87 overall, 24 years old, he has one year left at 7 million, would fit on the second line, he had 25 goals, 41 assists last year, I don't know, I think it's between Ehlers and Olafsson, Ehlers is a couple overalls higher, his contract three years left at 6 million, he is a playmaker, so the thing is that first line needs a sniper, if Jakob Silverberg is going to be gone, who's going to be on that first line? Because if Sam Steele or Shane Wright, Shane Wright is a playmaker, Quinton Byfield is a power forward, uh, Sam Steele is a playmaker, Adam Henrique is a two-way forward, I need someone who's going to score goals on that top line, and I don't know, Rickard Raquel seems to be a legend on the second line, as, but Jesper Helmerson perhaps, could be the first line forward by next season. Maxim Comtois, not sure. My, but the left side is, is set. So maybe Nick Ehlers as a playmaker would be a good thing. If I could even get him. Uh, they are a contender. This would put them pretty close in the cap. If I ask them to throw in a couple thirds, that could work. Benoit Olivier Gru, Sonny Milano, Max Jones, Jakob Silverberg, and Isaac Lundstrom for Nick Ehlers and two third round picks. Rejected, one third round pick, rejected, a fourth and a fifth, rejected, straight up, rejected. Okay, so Nick Ehlers won't happen. Looks like I'm going to see Victor Olafsson here. Victor Olafsson. He won't cost as much, so I'm going to take off. Uh, Silverberg's the one that I really want to dump the most, I think. And so I wouldn't mind dumping Milano and Silverberg with that, uh, the cost of them. So take out Gru and take out Lundstrom perhaps, just Milano, Jones, and Silverberg. Would that work if I just put in a pick to balance it out quickly? With a sixth, they say, it's too far off. So straight up should be pretty close. Isn't sufficient at all. Okay. So I'll add back a Benoit Olivier Gru, and then I will try to get a second out of this. What do they say to that? Trade accepted, so thank you boys. Big deal, Victor Olafsson is a member of the Anaheim Ducks. Thank you for your service, everyone who I traded. I'm glad I could get you a cup. I'm glad it all worked out. But for now, I'm going to have to say goodbye as we look forward to the future. Sorting by overall, the forwards now, it looks like this. First line, probably Raquel Olafsson steel depending on what the line schemes say. Olafsson in our lineup, can I see right away what the coach likes? Uh, no, it doesn't say, but his satisfaction with him is very high, so that's good. And unfortunately, three coaches are unfavored, so not sure what that means. Was not expecting that. I was looking for the trade finder, and out of nowhere, I was saying, what could I get for Isaac Lundstrom and Josh Mahura? And the Jets said, we'll give you a second, a third, and a prospect. And I said, what about giving me a first and a prospect? And they said, yes, just like that. I was not expecting that. So I just got a first round pick from the Winnipeg Jets. And, and this defensive prospect, I needed to get some more defensive prospects, Ekman, 19 years old, 74 overall, medium top 4D, he was a first round pick in 2021, defensive defenseman, 
So, okay, I got a good defensive prospect and a first round pick for Lundstrom and Mahura. So, Mahura is going to be replaced because I don't have the money for him nor the space because either Ekholm will sign or I'm going to trade for a defenseman. But either way, I did not have room for him. Maybe I should have waited until seeing if he signed or not. But unfortunately, I already pulled the trigger. So, we'll see if my gamble pays off. And oh, what? Again, Colorado beats me out for a coach. I offered him so much money. Oh, come on. Um, they want to give me two seconds. Why would I do that? Uh, now i got to fix my coaches. I'm trying to sign Omar Gostad to be my, go my goalie coach, even though he doesn't want to be. He's for forwards. I don't know what this coaching system means or how it works. Please, Matthias Ekholm, tell me you've signed. Please tell me you've signed a contract with me. Uh, thank you for reaching out. I look for okay, great. Come on, Ekholm. Okay, those two coaches both signed. Come on, Bello. Bang! I'm extremely happy to accept your offer. Thank you, Ekholm. Welcome to Anaheim. Okay, so that is done. Now, looking at my trade block for the off season for the offers I'm going to be receiving throughout uh, the simulation. I'm going to put Vilja Hanola there, who hasn't grown in years. So I'm going to put him there and see if anybody has anything to offer me. Uh, who else am I going to put there? You know what, let's put Owen Tippett just for fun to see what people have to offer, just out of curiosity. And let's put uh, one of these uh, goalie prospects. I have too many goalie prospects. Let's just put this guy, Lindbergh. If anybody wants to get, give me some garbage for Lindbergh. Okay, so let's simulate to next season. Let's check out the lines. And uh, I think we made all the trades that we're going to make, so let's wait and see for how the team is going to look. It's going to be just a bunch of deals, people wanting Joel Ar uh, Yoel Armia. All right, so we're finally here after getting a million trade offers of pure garbage. Now in this new season, we need to name a captain. Henrik with Olafsson, no, that's not going to happen. We need to name a captain now that uh, Ryan Getzlaff is no longer on our team. So for next season, I'd like to give an alternate to Rickard Raquel. I'll make him one of the alternates on this team. And I'd like to give an alternate to Adam Henrique as well. But the captaincy goes to the man who's been here since 2010. Our new captain of the Anaheim Ducks will be none other than Cam Fowler. Congratulations, our new captain. Very happy to see that. I'm going to hop into the lines here and fix them up and see how we are looking. So it looks like literally pretty much every prospect, defensive prospect in the NHL is a defensive defenseman. So I'm looking to get Justin Barron here from the Rangers on his entry level deal. 20 years old, medium top 4D, 74 overall. AHL needs defense. Yeah, I should have mentioned that's why I'm making this deal. My AHL roster needs defense. So I'm going to see if I could just throw in a third round pick and then a bunch of nobody prospects. Um, that is a lot of trade value in my favor so maybe a fourth balances it out trade rejected maybe a fifth nope let's just go straight up still rejected a second this year and a third next year man there are just no there's no defensive prospects in the NHL they're all defensive defensemen they're all pits I can't get anybody let me guess, it's some sort of a glitch in the game, right? Where every def prospect defenseman is a defensive defenseman. Everyone who's good is a defensive defenseman. It doesn't fit in the, in the algorithms, my friend. Isaac Barney. He's 65 overall, which is pits. Uh, do I even want this guy? 65 overall. 18 years old. Why not, bro? Isaac Barney. Third round pick. Oh, that's, let me guess, it's going to be literally impossible. To get Isaac Barney. This is where the player search will come into handy. Thank you, EA, for finally doing this. Let's check it out a lot quicker now. Give me a defenseman. Give me um, player type. I don't want, let's say I want a two way defenseman. You know what? I'm going to say any type because I, I wouldn't mind offensive either. I want someone who's between 17 and 19, nice and young, and I want someone who has uh, decent potential. Let's say that. Let's say between three and four stars. What's that? What's that going to give me? All the top four Ds. Okay. Chaika is 19 years old. Two-way defender. Okay. Still far from the NHL. This guy is 67 overall, 17 years old. Drew Commodore. Defensive defenseman, of course. Okay. 18. Isaac Barney. Uh, Ivan Habibulin. Defensive defenseman, of course. 
Marco Ajo has a two-way defender. He's 18 years old, 64 overall. That could be something. 18 years old, 64. You know what? Let's take off. Let's say I want all top four defensemen. I want them 17 or 18, and I want the, their potential to be a bit higher. Let's see it. Drew Commodore is not going to happen. Heavy Bully, Barney. Okay, so it starts at Aho, perhaps. Aho, Bales, Karpatsev, Erskine. Dennis Bales is two way. Karpatsev is defensive. Erskine is defensive. Okay, so it's between Karpat uh, Aho and Bales, both the Vancouver Canuck prospects. I don't think anyone's higher than that. No. Okay, it's between these two guys. Aho and Bales. Aho is five foot eleven, eighteen years old. He's six foot eighteen years old. A second round pick, thirty seventh overall, thirty sixth overall. So they went back to back. These guys. They did go back to back. Okay. One and a half star defense, two star skating, two star shooting, one and a half star puck skills. Uh, yeah, very similar. Bales or Aho. Let's see if either of them they want to trade either of them. They do want to trade Aho, okay. Do they want to trade Bale? Bales as well? They do want to trade Bales as well. Sheesh, this is a tough one. And they also have Chaika. Can I get both of them? Can I just trade you a bunch for both of them? And uh, second round pick. How close does that get me? Not too close. Who else can I throw in? Uh, second and a third? For those two prospects? Quite far off in value. Okay, so let's say I just want to trade for one of them. 5'11 versus 6'190 pounds, 184 pounds. This guy's one inch taller and six pounds heavier. Poise maybe it'll come down to. 70 poise. 70 poise. Maybe defensive awareness it'll come down to. They're both 75. 75, 75. They have almost the exact same stats, these guys. 74, 78 on the shooting. 74, 79. Slightly higher power. Offensive awareness. Discipline is the same. You know what, bro? Aho was drafted higher. Let's go with Aho. Can I get him for this? Bang! Trade accepted. Okay. Thank you very much. Finally got a defenseman in the, in the system. Actually, quickly, I do need to sign wingers for the um, AHL. Let's go to forwards. I can, I, I can use just a couple, especially a fourth line right wing. Sumerian Studenik might be the right fit. Just he's uh, 76 overall, 23 years old, has some potential. Bang. There you go. And then I wouldn't mind also getting a left wing because Deloria isn't really optimal. Di Giuseppe is a monster. Love Di, Gi Di Giuseppe. Three star shooting. Di Giuseppe. Welcome to San Diego. So quite a deal here. Patrice Bergeron getting traded from the Bruins to the Predators for Philip Grubauer and a prospect. So that's a crazy deal in Boston as they trade Patrice Bergeron. Wow, Di Giuseppe accepts his offer. Uh, why would I do that trade? And it's too dead. Okay, so let's fix up the lines and send you. Also, I was quickly looking at the contracts. Owen Tippett, right now, if I offer an extension, two years, 2.7. And if I go more or less, he wants quite a bit more. Eight years, 6.9, all that stuff. So two years brings him to still RFA status. So if I could get him two years at 2.550, he does want the extension. Uh, that would be pretty great, actually because I wouldn't mind getting my 84 overall second line snipers uh, locked up at that price, even if I did end up trading him or something. And last thing we have to see as well is where did Ryan Getzlaff go in free agency? Who did he sign with and who are we going to have to look at uh, watching games against? Philadelphia Flyers. So he has now dropped to an 83 overall at the age of 37. He signed a one-year $4.120 million contract with the Flyers. He does have bottom six potential now, which means he, by the end of the year, he's likely to be in the high 70s. Uh, very likely to be in the high 70s. And on the Flyers, he is playing on the, I would imagine, the third line. Yeah, with Konechny and Froelich. It's a good line. So gets laugh on the Flyers. So all the best to him. We're going to check out games against the Flyers when they come. So with all that done, we can finally look at the lines, and here is where it gets interesting and where you come in, and I need your help. So these are how the lines are looking as of right now. If I do the top six like this, the top two lines get plus threes. So with plus threes, it's 86, 87, and 88 on that top line, which is nice. Come, uh, yeah, power forward, playmaker, sniper. 
Second line, you have uh, Morand as of the centerman at 82 overall in his rookie season, it would be as a playmaker. Gives the line a plus three with Wright or Byfield. It also, Byfield gives it a plus three, Wright would not. And if Wright were on the top line, it would also be a plus three there. And I could put Sam Seal like this. So maybe I put Shane Wright as my first line center, but that's just a bit crazy. Jesper Helmerson, Shane Wright, and Mats Lindstrom on the third line, which could be a very nice line with Shane Wright as the playmaker between those two scorers. Jesper Helmerson is a good defensive forward. And then fourth line, Armia, Byfield, and Sherwood. Now, this is not a bad lineup. I wouldn't mind going into the season like this. Byfield, he's been a bit of a letdown. He played, we drafted him really high, seventh overall, three, you know, like two and a half seasons later or whatever. He, yeah, two seasons later, he hasn't done much in the OHL that he wasn't already doing. He's gone a bit down. Uh, he's 80 overall at the age of 20. He still has a lot of trade value. I guess I'm going to hang on to him, unless you think I shouldn't. But Shane Wright as my third line center. Now that I think about it, with all the defensemen, the, the, the lack of defensive prospects, I should have drafted maybe that, uh, that offensive defenseman, Cristiano Ling, I think, on the Canucks. So that's the issue. But I have Shane Wright. He's going to be a monster. I have him now. But this is my problem because look who's scratched. Adam Henrique is scratched. There's no room for him. If I put Adam Henrique on the second line, it takes away the plus one. And now Morand would be out of the lineup. Do I put Henrique on the second line? Keep it as a plus one. Uh, yeah. Do I put Henrique on the second line? Keep it as a plus one. And then trade Morand or play Morand maybe on the fourth line instead of these guys? Or do I keep the lines like this, give it the plus three, and trade Adam Henrique? This is where I need your help, boys and girls. What do I do with the forwards? On defense, if I go like this, it's a 3-1-1 for the pluses. Uh, Matthias Ekholm is on the third pair, which I don't really like, but it says that that's where he fits best, and I'll give him you know power play and penalty kill time. Uh, Gouli on the top pair gives it a plus three. Edmondson could also go on the top pair, but Lindholm can't go on the top pair. There's no way for Lindholm to go on the top pair and it gets a plus three. <laughs> Putting Lindholm and Ekholm together gives it a negative one. So Lindholm, I don't like that he's not in the top pair either because he's getting paid a lot to be like the best defenseman on my team. It says he fits best on the third pair, so I don't know why that is exactly. So let me know your thoughts on defense as well. Should I be looking to get someone better than Larson? I don't know. Goalies, of course, Gibson and Maratzik. Scratches, Person, Delorier, Henrique. Those are the lines I need your help. In the San Diego lines look like this. Not really ideal. Plus one, plus three here. Pacioretty, I'd rather have him a bit higher in the lineup. But then it takes away the pluses. So I'm kind of just going to go with this, I think. Defense plus ones if I go like that. Ville Honola now at the age of 21 hasn't grown from a 77 in like three seasons. He's played three seasons on San Diego. Very good seasons, but hasn't grown at all from 77 overall. So I'll need your advice there as well on what we need to do on defense. Dostal 80 overall is the backup. Uh, no big scratches. So let me know your thoughts on all of that. That is what I'm going to need from you in the comments leading into next episode. So very vital that I get that info from you. I just want to quickly look at the Winnipeg Jets lines. Did uh, Lundstrom grow? He's still stuck at an 81. So it wasn't a big issue to not get him. He signed two years, 1.475. And then Josh Maher also remained at an 81 overall. So that's it for this one, boys. The trade block, nothing too crazy, but let me know. I'll find a deal. It's not that I'm saying who do I trade for. It's more what to do with the lines, who plays where, and how do you think it would fit best. So let me know your thoughts. I'm going to wait to see what you boys have to say in the comments. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.